whatever your goal is set at. What do you want to be? What do you want your business to be? What do you want? Where do you want your sales to be? This is how you get there. Consistent activity. It's the secret. The strategies aren't the secret. We're giving them all away. The strategies are no longer the excuse. Consistent activity is the secret to success. The plan works if you work the plan, Joe. Hello, happy Monday and welcome back. In fact, let me rephrase that. Happy Mental Health Monday. We're going deep on some big things and all things mental toughness, mental health, the HALT program. I want to talk about 75 hard today, all in an effort to help you master your sales, simplify your pricing and deliver premium level service, which is just service at the highest level. Highest level of what? Well, without reference to anything else, your highest level. Would it be wrong of us to want to do that for these nice electricians today, Joseph? No, it would not. In all honesty, I think working on mental health is one of those unspoken hurdles that people don't really touch on enough. And I think it's an incredibly worthwhile topic to dive into. All right. Very cool, man. Well, I can't wait to go a little deeper. First, speaking of mental health, I never want to start a week talking business. Mm -hmm. Can we just, can I just ask, how was your weekend, brother? How'd it go? Weekend, weekend was an interesting thing. Um, obviously, you know, I'm, we were still fighting whatever illness we had on Friday when last we talked. So we had a house full of yuck. But the fun times was that regardless of being sick, we were incredibly productive. Like, I don't know about you, but I love when Friday ends and Monday begins and I can look at it back and be like, what did I do with that time? We mm. literally made action moves that I know are going to create impact in the future. Well, I love that, man. Big time. What about and, you? and well, yeah, ultimately, uh, what did I do to shift gears there? We inherited a dog. Some of you have seen in my content, mm -hmm. uh, little rescue, great Dane Hank, who's pretty anxious, timid fellow, but uh, getting along fine with our pit bull. I know there's many naysayers of the pit bulls. I get it. Uh, the breed has a tendency to have prey drive and gets very excitable. So they are advanced um, dog ownership for sure. But mm -hmm. I've been back into retraining and got Jade, our pit bull, um, very much behaving extremely well. And it went about 10 times better than I imagined, man. At this point, these two are friends. You've been uh, sleeping next to each other, doing a little cuddling last night. So I love it. That's going well. What threw me was you said, I have a little, and then you also added the word Great Dane into the situation. I mean, didn't you tell me that Hank is like five foot at the head at this point? There's nothing yeah. little about that dog. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we still got the old school wall going up to the kitchen. There's a uh, pencil lines for everyone's mm -hmm. height in the family. When we do family dinners, we update it. And Hank is officially taller than some of the young kids in this family, for sure. I love that. <laughs> yeah, man. Anyways, uh, mental health. I, mm -hmm. I have a little fun fact for you. Hit me. Did you know that I actually sit on the board of directors of a nonprofit about mental health? No. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Mental health. Absolutely, man. And I can't wait to go deeper on, on that. Even this week, we'll talk more about it and, and what that um, effort is meant to do. But I'm actually, I've got a real soft spot for helping uh, troubled youth. Mm -hmm. And I think... That with the gap in what we need in industry for mm -hmm. help recruitments and the gap in what the youth need in your community, I think there's a huge tie here that's really been underutilized, under leverage that could serve both sides. And so I'll be an advocate of that until the day this mission ends, which as you know, we can't see that at this point. Yeah, I love that. And I'm as always, I'm going to support you every step of the way because I think mental health is obviously it's something that is very near and dear to me as well for different reasons. So I'm glad that we can face this challenge shoulder to shoulder. We get to smash it out this week. I want to share with you something that our coaches actually said that I found very interesting mm -hmm. as they're hiring their client success team and their salespeople. One of the things they're interviewing and asking that they're looking for is someone who's done personal counseling slash therapy in the past. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, Joe? Oh, my God. I honestly, if, if you told me that every one of our employees went to therapy, 
I would feel like we had a better team. I really would because the kind of person that invests in therapy that's not compulsory, like a jail sentence or something like that, shows that they at least have the incentive to say, I could be better or at least recognizes I have a problem and I'm taking steps to overcome it. Mm. That kind of framework of a person is always the one that's going to overcome a challenge if presented with it. Absolutely. Let me call a quick pause and just engage with our viewers, those live with us in the Electricpreneur Secrets Facebook group right now. If you had a great weekend, please let us know how was your weekend. And B, if you have a relationship with mental health and have sought some counseling, even, you know what, in my experience, I'm back with my counselor right now. Mm -hmm. Every, about bi-weekly I meet up. And what I find is my counselor is really good at just listening. Mm. And so it gives me a space. It's like having an etched in calendar space where I'm just going to work on myself and my mm -hmm. mental health. It doesn't have to be, and it isn't often like tears and talking about the past and all that. I mean, sometimes it goes there. Sure. But a lot of times it's just a place to really empty out all the mix up that happens and builds up over the weeks, mm -hmm. sort it out and just get another perspective. And I often leave there feeling much better. And I just wanted to throw that plug in. So if you guys are with us, if you've experienced this before, go ahead and throw a shameless hand up because I actually applaud you guys for working on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That big mirror is a heavy one to hold. Now, without further ado, what do you say we tie this into the 75 hard topic? I'm ready. Sounds like a great topic. This is kind of new to you, Joe, right? Have you heard of the 75 hard before? So I've heard about it in passing, but it was never really something that was covered in detail. And I intentionally did not look it up because I wanted to make sure that when we're talking about it, it's still coming in fresh. Nice. I like that. Well, let me give you an intro to the guy that created it. Because mm -hmm. I really think that his reasoning for developing this challenge is really strong. And it's something mm -hmm. that I would aspire for us to do for electricians someday. Okay. So... 75 hard had a few rules built into it. Okay. And the six rules are simple. And then I'll explain why they're, they are the way they are and how it's kind of mis, um, misconceived by a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, let me, let me actually pull it up to make sure I get this right. So if you skip a day, you have to start over It's 75 day challenge about your mental and physical health. Okay, mm -hmm. so the next one is you had to pick a diet to follow with no alcohol or cheat meals. Okay. The, the no cheat meal thing is really rigorous and difficult. Again, if you had mm -hmm. a cheat meal, say even for a moment you relapsed on a marshmallow, you're back to day one. That's hard, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're supposed to drink a gallon of water a day. That could mm -hmm. be really tough because a lot of people are really kicking up the coffee and, and less water, right? That can be really, really challenging. Yeah. Um, complete two daily workouts, one of which has to be outside. Mm -hmm. Where people mix this one up a bit is this doesn't have to be a rigorous weightlifting thing, but it's got to be something that gets your heart rate up. I mean, we can all agree that two times a day, even for half hour, 45 minutes each would be good for you to get that done, wouldn't it? I would agree with that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we're all busy, right? So um, on top of that, reading 10 pages of a nonfiction book and then taking a progress photo every day. Mandy's in here with us. She's actually mid-challenge. And Mandy, you did inspire us to bring this up because uh, you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. And I've mm -hmm. tried it before, Joe. And as someone with a bit of neurodivergence happening, mm -hmm. I did not make it. I didn't make it two weeks. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I failed on, though, was taking a photo. Really? Yes. It's just not easy when we're when we're building a business, when we're out mm -hmm. there working, when you're trying to improve your sales, when you're trying to serve at the highest level. It's mm -hmm. not easy to follow through and be consistent. And that's one of the biggest reasons I wanted to bring this topic in mm -hmm. because it's actually not about that photo. It's really not about physical pro progress. It's about mental progress and retaking control of your life seems and more like an accountability thing challenge yeah no I, i'm like when i hear about that it sounds more like an accountability where the picture is just a snapshot saying i've initialed 
on my signature. I've initialed on this day. Hmm. That's more what I would see the picture as listed. And granted, I haven't had any real exposure to the program, but at first glance, that's that's what I hear. What it really spells out to me is the difficulty of making a list of essentially five things plus the one that's like, hey, start over mm -hmm. and following that list day in and day out. And when I first said it, you were like, this sounds pretty easy. Yes, I was going to say, I, I did say that. And I can explain why, because I'm sure there's some people who are like, what, what are you talking about? Mm. So one of the reasons why I'm called or nicknamed SalesBot is as someone on the autism spectrum, rules are my thing. I love rules. I love KPIs. I love lists. Like that's just, that's the land that my brain lives. Yeah. So part of what makes me so successful is I have, once I've talked about two boards and almost like religious dedication to do things on that list. So for me, when you're saying like, okay, we have to do these things, but there's no framework of the thing. Like there's no specificity of what the workout is yeah. or what the diet is or what the outside activity is. I'm thinking to myself like, okay, theoretically I could craft it to be what I could do in a day put it on the board and say, this is the first thing that you do every day before the girls get up. And that's just it. Yeah. And just for, for those of you listening, watching with us right now, Joe's like the best at this best partner in the world, because what's on your list you. gets done. I've seen it time and time again. Whereas I don't have to worry about you. You got to worry about me getting my list done. My list grows, man. It's not shrinking. Right. So last week I did tag three big things off it. Mm -hmm. But that's what I love about this is the flexibility. It doesn't mean it's easy necessarily for most people. In fact, reportedly about 100,000 people have completed this challenge, 100,000 mm -hmm. plus, right? Somewhere in the vicinity. I would bet that it's a 1%. For a while, this was viral on social media. Mm -hmm. I get that it's been a bit, guys. We're sharing it again because it's still relevant in the context of having control over your life. So let me bridge it across, not the old card game, but let me bridge this across mm. to our world if I can. Go for it. I'm here. We've talked about the Eisenhower matrix a few times, mm. the important urgent quadrants, right? And mm. the four quadrants, the four combinations of important and urgent, important, not urgent, urgent, not important, and not urgent and not important. We know where we want to be. We know that we'd be most effective in our lives and in our business if everything is planned and executed according to the plan. But that's not really what happens day in and day out, is it? No, not normally. I mean, for most of us, for those list-oriented individuals, I mean, not following it sounds like torture. But for the average person, we're not usually built like that. So I can understand why this could be such a challenge to some people. So... Imagine, you know, we're still out there running our respective companies in the field. What are some of the things that might take us off of our list today? I mean, Ooh, I can help with I, this. <laughs> I think in class, even I'll bring one up. Mm -hmm. uh, someone, M Mandy was with us. She received a call because one of the client's kids vomited while they were on the way to the, the, the service call. Mm -hmm. That's just one little reactive piece that you could sit here and say, we have no control over that. Mm -hmm. but it influences the rest of our day. Go ahead and jump in with your own examples, Joe. So I remember the things that would throw me was when I was in my van, I was less healthy because I'm very good at staying on schedule. But when the schedule changes, now there's a gap. There wasn't usually something that I, unless I intentionally said, this is what I'm using as a gap filler for today. Mm. I would be subject to remember the halt exercise. Yes which we're going to touch on a little bit, where I would say, okay, well, what do I do now? Well, I'm kind of hungry. All right, let's just go and get something to eat. And then I'd go eat something. And then I'd end up doing my work orders or my option sheets in the parking lot of some fast food restaurant. And that would be what I'm doing for that time frame. So yeah, I was working, but I was eating. So it wasn't the same thing. Or be like, mm. yeah, I'm going to have a cigarette. I'll be fine. You know, like, no. So I can't, I can't see back then the changes to routine without the contingency plan for change yeah. being something that would throw people. Totally. And you mentioned HALT and I do yes. think it fits now. So HALT being, I think the acronym of, of basically the mm -hmm. relapse tendencies from mm -hmm. like AA 12 step programs, right? Go mm -hmm. ahead, touch on it. Yeah. So I, I heard about the HALT program and it really spoke profoundly to me because it really, it resonated. 
It yeah. was when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, that's when relapse happens. And relapse doesn't mean you're just shooting up. Or I mean, relapse yeah. can be anything that you're doing. Anything you're trying to avoid becomes harder to avoid when you're hungry. I know for a fact I'm that way. Like you were trying to not eat bad food and then you're hungry because, God, you know, food took a longer to make or you forgot to order the right thing. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, I can, I can have a snack. Yeah. Or hungry, angry. You're angry at something. I mean, that happens. Go ahead. If I can insert, maybe you guys have said this before in your relationships with your partners, hangry. Anyone ever oh, said yeah. hangry? I'm hangry right now. Mm -hmm. Right. We're checking two boxes here just to yeah. support that or the lonely, like you're not getting that attention. One of the ironic things about humans is that we're kind of like cats in this day and age. And I think the pandemic influenced this too. But like we like to be hurt and then go hide. We recluse and we actually create the lonely problem and the depression sets in and it t really takes hold. Mm -hmm. And then of course the tired, well, are we getting enough sleep? Not to hijack you, Joe, but a little complimentary teamwork on that. Mm -hmm. That halt influences your schedule too. And dare I say, it becomes an egoic battle. I believe a lot of what that halt is, is where you're saying, fuck it. You know I'll what? I'll start again Joe? tomorrow. Fuck it. Whatever that means today, fuck it. I'm back to relying on autopilot or my mm -hmm. ego is taking over and it's going to protect itself in whatever we're about to face. You ever felt like that before? Too often, dude. Too often. It takes a lot of mental exercise and mental fortitude and mental equity to be able to have the reserves to face that. Because anger, for me, anger is like a drug. It's the more you get exposed to it, the easier it is to call on. The further you distance yourself from it, the less hold it has over you. Mm. And I spent many years removing or trying to remove my sources of anger. 100%. Let's relate this further to what we do and what you do specifically as the sales bot. I heard a sales coach team lead say recently, the mm. worst thing that could happen here is you see instant success. Mm -hmm. Speaking to a new hire, right? Yep. As a team developer, the worst thing you could that could happen here is you see instant success because of the ego center that's driven from that. You're far better to see repeated small successes from the process that you're learning and putting efforts in. And I think that relates directly to what we're talking about here today with 75 hard and how we can develop that challenge even for electricians specifically. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And you know what? The reason why I feel like that's such an important statement is I feel like I've learned more from my failures than I have from my successes. And I think that the failures have actually taught me more and shaped me more as a person because the person who shows up to bat and bats a thousand right off the right out the gate, they're never going to need to see the room to improve. Whereas I was the guy showing up and I couldn't hit a ball for the life of me. And mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to. So I needed to find that fortitude to dig in. And that's now what I get to share with other people. Sharing from a place of resilience, sharing from a place of, oh, easy street. Yeah. I'm going to tie a couple of concepts together here to really drive this home the best I possibly can. Sure. Reportedly 100,000 plus. Let's drop the plus and focus on the 100,000. Nice whole number to work with. You know I'm a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. Reportedly 100,000 have completed this challenge. 89% of those reported feeling more in control and more confident than ever before. Okay, let, let's back up a sec. Mm -hmm. Feeling more in control and more confident than ever before after following a diet for 75 days, after mm -hmm. drinking water for 75 days, after, after completing two small daily workouts, 75 days and reading 10 pages, so 750 pages of books and taking a photo of themselves. You realize that all those things are related to just working on yourself and doing so consistently, right? Mm -hmm. So it's where you focus is where you grow. And actually, Rain, our client success coach, reposted an Alex Hormozy um, little screenshot of something he said the other day. And Hormozy is someone else I'd love to talk about in full one day. But he said, look, you can have everything you want in life. 
You just can't have it today. So put in your reps. That's exactly the mental fortitude, the mental toughness, and the mental health challenge that is present here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Delayed gratification. What would happen if you and your team were trained for delayed gratification instead of immediate? I really think that that would produce some of the best technicians the industry has ever seen because the biggest problem is that people will go in and say, I need to learn a sales trick. Like the word is sales trick and not sales process. I want to learn a trick that will help me sell more. You're looking just for a time hack. You don't want to change who you are. You just want someone to add a new tool to your Batman belt. Instead, we're trying to teach you a process that lets you be a better person. And at the end of the process, you're that kind of person that can go the distance compared to me just handing you a special trick. Joe, this is massive. Once again, I'm going to unveil the secret to success. What is success? Well, whatever your goal is set up. What do you want to be? What do you want your business to be? What do you want, where do you want your sales to be? This is how you get there. Consistent activity. It's the secret. The strategies aren't the secret. We're giving them all away. The strategies are no longer the excuse. Consistent activity is the secret to success. The plan works if you work the plan, Joe. Mm -hmm. And you'll feel better after you've done it. And you'll look around you and realize you're alone in leading that. Honestly, it's like 1% to 5%. You ever heard this concept? 95% of the population, or sorry, mm -hmm. 5% of the population controls 95% of the money? Yeah, it makes sense. Yep consistent activity and as you grow with that your opportunity grows too the same is with premium service and i wholeheartedly accept the challenge to draw that map up all week long for these people to I'm help down. you guys succeed at whatever you're facing to help you reach that next level robert with us ben with us rob says hey that sounds like jim Rohn content great stuff absolutely mm -hmm. brother Jim Rohn, the late and great. Couldn't speak enough good things about him. But really, guys, consider this. And I'll give you proof. I'll give you what you can already see about our own 75 hard challenge. In fact, we're on challenge 182. In fact, that might be the wrong episode number. Every once in a while, I get this wrong. We've done so many episodes by showing up every day of the work week with you guys to be in the trenches leading the change that we want to see in this industry to help you master sales simplify pricing and deliver premium level service we've showed up 182 maybe 83 times now that was hard joe that was hard it's not easy mm -hmm. we've literally had others reach out and ask how we do it you know the thing is that, that comes to mind is when people ask how we always look at it and be like, this is our mission. This is our calling. It's different to just clock in every day, right? If you're doing this because it's a job and you're just like punch, slam, okay, this is what I'm doing. Literally, I wake up and I, I feel a sense of gratitude. A gratitude for this mission that we're on because we're able to give something that we didn't have when we needed it. And for me, that's it speaks close to the heart. So it's not a job. It, this is our calling. And I'm so grateful to serve that calling. 100%, man. We should wrap this up with a couple of action items. We get to spin this all week long and help you folks achieve your best outcomes, your success, whatever that looks like for you. Honestly, man, we've been showing up at least 182 times with a couple mm -hmm. action items each time. I'm down. If... If you were listening to this, I mean, consider this your beginning of your challenge as, as the primary action item. I'll go out and say it. Listen to us every day and then take one of the actions every day. If you did that, wouldn't you improve, Joe? I do believe so. Really, if you were to take even, even the something the size of a Lego and you simply put one on top of the other every single day, you would have a skyscraper by the end of the year. It's insane what consistent effort would do. But people don't seem to want to do that. 
They would rather get it tall enough to see higher than they can see before and then stop from there. Totally. When really it's just the completed action of just one on top of another. Since you said that, let me just throw this in there. Every once in a while, I go back and update a post that I began, I think back in March, where we were just about to get to our first thousand downloads. Mm -hmm. That's only seven months ago. Yeah. Within this month, we're breaking through 30,000 downloads. That's the 75 hard effect. That's the compound interest effect. Every effort every day has amounted to this and nothing less. And it will continue to grow, brother. And it will for you guys if you take action. Okay, do we have an all-star today? I think I gave the basic. I have an all-star that we can work with. All right, hit it, brother. So the all-star, because for me, I was thinking, what would I want to do if I were to take this challenge? And why would I want to do it? And I figure that that in and of itself becomes the all-star action. Mm. To be told to do something is different than to be called to do something. So the all-star action that I have for you guys today is if you were to take five minutes in meditation, just not even meditation, five minutes in silence. And at the end of that five minutes after sitting in silence, ask yourself, what do I even want? If I were to be given anything in the world and I received that wish, what would it be? And the first thing that comes to your mind, I want you to hold on to that thing and then ask yourself this question, why did I think that? Because what you'll find is that your heart's initial desire will reveal a direction, but it's often not a direction you understand why or where it's going. Take five minutes in silence and simply just ask, if I had have anything in the world, what would it be? And then just hold that with you and question it. Okay. Okay. You just, you just set me up for something I can't not touch. Go for it. <laughs> That's a double negative. You don't often get double negatives out of me. Go for it. I just got it. Like there's a double all-star here mm -hmm. because it's so relevant to what we're talking about. Also then figure out the how. Draw yourself a map. Like how do I get to what I want? And then go out and follow the map. That's the hard part. It might take you a while. One of my other mentors, Darren Hardy, who studied under Jim Rohn as well, as Robert mentioned earlier, Darren Hardy literally has a lot of things figured out, but his, his social um, aptitude with women as a straight male individual was pretty weak. He literally drew the woman of his dreams and then realized, oh crap, I'm not the guy that she would want. So the next thing he did is create a map to become that guy and literally, this is in his books, literally met the woman of his dreams, becoming the guy he needed to become, and they've been married ever since. It's a crazy Romeo Juliet story, brother, but I just felt that really needed to be on there. Was that okay? Yeah, no, it's fine. You right. know, it's, I respect the grind. I can respect the drive. And I can respect how building those blocks one on top of the other gets you to what you've always wanted. Absolutely. Well, guys, this has been another episode of Electricpreneur Secrets. Oh, Mandy says it's from the compound effect. Thank you, Mandy. That's a book that's right behind me if I shut my screensaver off, uh, virtual background off. This has been another episode of Electricpreneur Secrets, the electrician's podcast, where Joseph, the sales bot, Luke Canny, and I, Clay Newmeyer, the Canadian pleasant peasant, go live with you five days a week to help you master sales, simplify your pricing, and deliver premium level electrical service. And guess what? If this is Monday, I can't wait for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday this week. Hell, maybe we'll show up and do Saturday and Sunday. I'm oh. uh, <laughs> hard no on that. But crickets. we got crickets. Okay, <laughs> five days a week. We're sticking to that. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Cheers. Take care, guys. Have a great day.